Okay, so um, my name is Sifoa. I'm 27, and since February of 2019, I live in Auckland. So I originally come from Paris, as you can see with my accent. <laughs> um, I come from a, a family of five children. My parents come from Congo in Africa and arrived in France in the 1980s. They, they always believe in God, so I grew up like knowing God because God wasn't a stranger for me. So my parents were really involved in our church. My mom was a part of this mom group who speak loudly and everybody knows. <laughs> they were both in the church in the beginning, before I was born. So they were really close to the, to the leaders. We were going to church every Sunday and I loved it. They would buy us all this food that we could eat during the service. We would play with our friends and after church we would go to McDonald's, guys. <laughs> so I can for sure say that Sunday was my favorite day until I turned 12, until some issues in the church came out in the light. When those issues appeared, my parents, especially my dad, start to put some distance and pull my conflict. However, my mom kept, kept on trying to find the right church. She badly wanted us to have a relationship with us, to have a spiritual life. But at that time, I didn't anymore. It wasn't until I was 17 that I started to think that I might need God in my life. Because one day, my little sister came back at home and she wanted to get baptized. So yeah. I was like, oh, okay. She aroused my curiosity about God and she got baptized, baptized first and one year later, me as well. Except, what I had not been taught before I got baptized is that a baptism without repentance, which is a radical change of what? 180 degree turn from your seat is vain. So without repentance, I just kept on living my life as usual. I considered myself to be a real Christian. I thought that a Christian is somebody who is God, a person who does good, but not bad. Um, a Christian is somebody kind with other people, and they help others by giving some coin to the homeless sometimes. Um, yes, for me, a Christian is somebody who goes to church, pray whenever she feels the need to, and over and above, a Christian doesn't do everything. That was my perception of a Christian, and this is why. I was not a saint, but definitely not a monster. In my mind, there was someone in this world worse than me. I thought that if God came down, I would have solid and logical arg argument to debate my case by comparing myself to all those people who do bad things. Even if I was cursing and lying every single day, I could still go to heaven, but not those who kill people or do everything. For me, there, were, there was this scale of, of sins. My ignorance was the height of sadness. Few years after I was baptized, I started to be swamped by the doubt that God existed. I was of course praying sometimes before my exams, but to be honest, if it didn't exist, it suited me because I could live my life as I wanted without worrying of the consequences. I was happy to swim in that gray zone where I knew that there might be a God, but I didn't want to know more about him. I didn't want to find the truth and I was just scared to find it. I was one of those girls who loved to say, I'm the master of my fate, I'm the captain of my soul, I just decide, I control my life. And for my lack of knowledge of the word of God, I began to create my own morals and rules. I, began, I became my own God. So my first motto, of course, was don't do unto others what you don't want others to do to you. And then there was the open-minded, be that hungry woman with a free mind and spirit or just be apathetic to anything and anybody so you won't be hurt. So just do you and you you. But the more I was invited by the doubt that there was a God, the more I attached myself to my own morals and rule with the false lucidity of mind that I was still a good Christian. And with the all that if 
there were gone at the same time. I was trying to serve two masters, me first and God, just in case he was alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no man can serve two masters, for either he will all to one and despite the other. He will end up getting lost and wondering which one is the one. And that's what happened to me. I turned my back to God, focusing on my own commands to the point where I began to feel this deep pain. From day one, I didn't understand why. Why I was feeling this painful sadness and then I just realized that it was the pain of a hole. A hole that grew daily. A hole I tried to fill up with all the desire that this world could offer me, such as money, clothes, travel, but nothing really worked. I clearly, I clearly remember one day when I was suffering so much that I went shopping. I was like, okay, I need new clothes. <laughs> so I went shopping, I was in my favorite shop, and I was just looking for one sweater, just one. And I ended up like leaving the shop with bag of clothes, spending more than $500. And <laughs> With a lot of eagerness and excitement, I mean, on my way back home, I just texted my little sister telling her that her lunch is crazy on my shopping. I was just so happy. But as soon as I just arrived, I walked in the door, the excitement just disappeared. The, the adrenaline faded when I looked all at and when I looked at all those clothes and realized that my friend was still here. My friend said I was a shopaholic. <laughs> <laughs> and now I just say that I was just desperate actually and ready to do anything to stop the suffering. I became mad at everybody, questioning their true love for me. Some loved me, others hated me, but realistically how many knew me? How many knew the true me? Again, nobody knew the reason of my silence or what it meant. I was mad also at that God, that God who was supposed to love me and protect me. I didn't understand why I was here. On this first, I was asking him why I was still alive. Like, what was the purpose of me living just to suffer? My suffering was so huge and wild that I began to pray for God to just take my life away, just pull the trigger so my, because my existence was just me. So before I came in Auckland, it was the only prayer that I had. It was just, God, please take my life so you can kill that suffering. Before I came in Auckland, I remember writing the following words in my notebook. And it said, I'm drowning. I continue to head to the depth of the water. I try to come back to the surface, but I can barely get there. God, please help me. The radical change is needed, but I need you. You're the only one who can guide me. I hope I will not be hungry anymore. <coughs> so it wasn't too long after I arrived in Oklahoma that I was met by two Christians. I studied the Bible and found the hole that was missing in my heart. Actually, it was just a, a God-shaped hole, a hole that was created. Um, other truths and not just to be good. That is why I became a Christian actually. <clears throat> I learned through the Bible how to become a true worshipper in spirit, in faith, full of joy and eagerness, but also in the truth by following his commands and not just my command or trying to do things for God is really the only one who knows the reasons of my silence and now I know that. He reads in me as an open book. He sees me for who I am and not how I want to appear. And he gives me everything I need to keep my heart full every single day. When I got baptized this year, I felt a huge difference actually. Coming out of, um, of the water, I felt like God was just hugging me. I felt at peace. And I remember there is this quote that said, this is the place where everything is better and everything is safe. And for me, that place is with just God. So 